Brian here from QuantLabs.net. Um, I just wanted to show you my continued investigation with uh, Java Calling R. It is becoming pretty well my chosen set of uh, technologies between um, the high frequency trading platform that I've got chosen. I'll be posting some more videos on that. I've got, I've got quite a few on that already on the Algo Trader. Um, but today I just wanted to show, obviously I'm using R. Um, as the open source uh, analytics solution to bridge between Java and R. This is a way to get around the, a lot of the other open source uh, um, trading platforms that I've seen where they have what I call obviously gotchas and that's where they try to get you into the commercial part of their open source uh, trading platform um, and uh, these are ways to get around it. Um, I also find I'm hoping that this is probably a more intelligent way of doing it as well as well as you know me I like my source code okay so let's start on with the history of um, where things started um, I just wanted to let you know I just do a simple search on Java calling our Google code um, now I know that there's this one called Rengen um, I've looked at it I just I mean it, it looks really cool um, with this interpreter and you can do all kinds of stuff within um, within uh, you know running an R interpreter within Java I think that's that's really cool you know doing simple stuff like this uh, you know that's awesome but I don't need that kind of power um, to be honest uh, the code and, and everything is just I don't know where to start um, I don't know. It's just this this project I, I couldn't figure out uh, at all. Um, so that led me to this project that I've talked about um, quite a bit in another video. I appreciate uh, the author giving uh, me a, a link back to to a video that I've done already on R Caller. Today um, I would encourage you to uh, uh, watch that video. Um, but we're going to talk more about our caller, um, especially our caller 2.0. Um, so let's get to that. Okay. So essentially, all you need to do is just download a, a, a jar file, put it into your Java project. I'll show you that in a minute, um, and uh, use simple coding examples like this, uh, just to, just to demonstrate how to call um, our as well as uh, you can also do plotting within R as well, um, like right here. But I'll show you some other examples that I've seen under the R code uh, examples, um, which is right here under sample calls under the wiki. Um, so just come under here under the wiki examples, R caller under Google code. You should find more examples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into my uh, my Eclipse. Now I just want you to know I'm using the latest uh, Eclipse. This is uh, Eclipse uh, Juno um, and I've got a project here called R-Caller2. Um, four, four classes uh, or Java uh, files. Um, I made some slight modifications to get this working for my needs and, and, and for my simple stuff but they do work. Um, uh, this is basically just ripping out, well not ripping out, but copying the code from this site here. Um, these two scripts are, are, are the ones I'm about to show you. Uh, this is just a simple um, call. I, I've run this in my previous video. I, I just want to show you that it runs. Um, and here you go. Uh, it's. I'll show you a better code example. But I just want to show you, it is making a call to our and um, you know it works awesome uh, I'll show you the other one uh, which is this one here okay I just showed you the basic one this is plotting with our caller uh, just watch th this this is where I get kind of excited uh, so it's run caller plot uh, there you go it's running awesome okay so let's move on to the other two examples found under the wiki under this R code uh, sorry Google code uh, section on googleco.com. Um, so we got a simple call and more statistics. Uh, I'm going to focus on, actually let me just show you this one, simple call. Similar to the other one I just showed you, some, uh, our call of three in my Google pro uh, Eclipse project. 
there you go. It just does a simple call to the um, to the uh, to the uh, R generates a plot. But let's let's talk about some caveats. Um, specifically, what you need to understand is you need to install R Universal. Without that, you cannot do anything. Uh, and that you need that in your R environment. So I'm using R Studio here. I've shown you how to install that. Just come under Packages, Install Packages, and look for R Universal. Simple, and you should be able to uh, successfully install it. Uh, without R Studio, you could just do a, a manual install by running this command here: Install Packages R Universal. That will do all of this stuff. Once you've done that, then you can start playing with your Java code. Um, so this is where we're at now I've talked enough about the code itself or part of it but I want to show you a more important example which is essentially um, this more statistics example um, this this is a, a really powerful thing that you get um, that you can't get with uh, our uh, I should say MATLAB um, setting up this sort of thing with MATLAB and, and the uh, J called builder any toolbox it's it's not it's too wonky but when you look at how easy uh, to work with our our running our uh, commands or, or functions line by line you can do that with this function from within Java so I'm going to show you that now um, okay so what what's going to happen is we're just going to create a, a, a random generator or uh, we're going to um, instantiate this random object um, and now we're going to call and instantiate the caller, our caller, our code. And basically, one thing you need to realize is I've shown a demo and running it in Linux. I've now showing it in Windows. You need to tell uh, the caller object where your R script exists or where it uh, lives. So, and this is my path here, um, and it runs. Now, here's where I'm thinking: if you're going into a heavily multi-threaded environment. You're running our script, so you don't really, you should not have to really worry too much about um, any collisions or any locking on the R script because it's running its own session of R script from the equivalent of the command line, obviously running the R script executable. Is this the smartest way of doing it? Maybe, maybe not. Now, um, something like uh, our Java, let's say, which is all socket programming. What happens if that that uh, server uh, on the other end is not working. You can't do your your critical um, uh, uh, R script uh, calls. So running the executable alone, you're, you're removing that dependency. Is it the smartest way for low latency? Probably not. But uh, I'll worry about that if it becomes a massive issue uh, down the line. Um, just so people know, one way to get around that, if it is a concern, just have your OS, like in Windows, Linux, running on a solid state drive. Um, that will enhance your execution of these uh, processes off the command line very quickly. Uh, for example, uh, let's say if you have a, a server that's loading up Windows XP, usually on, an S, on a SATA drive, SATA drive, uh, it takes 20 seconds to load. For Windows XP on an SSD drive, it's usually seven seconds. That's how fast, and that's the difference that a solid-state drive makes. So, if it is a concern to run this R script again, just have it run off of a solid-state drive. That's one way to expedite the this 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 statement right here uh, in a heavily um, threaded environment. Just saying, I'm not saying that's all con conceptual right now. Okay, so let's move on to. Uh, the uh, code itself in Java. As you can tell, I'm going I'm to create some uh, random um, data uh, values or variables. Um, and this is where it gets kind of cool, cool because to easily um, transfer, I guess you could call it, your Java object into the R environment, you just do this little change. That's it. And then you th that's your bridge right there between the Java data and the R environment data. It's just this line. That's it. It's simple because you are loading in this code, uh, which is part of uh, the API for our caller from here. Okay, so I really like that. So what does that mean now? 
So moving on, we have now in our environment X. Okay. So now we can run within the R environment from within Java all this R code, all this stuff. It's 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 awesome. I mean, think about it. Um, you know, we now have the ability to run as if uh, we're in R using this R script. Okay, and then from there uh, we have the ability to bridge them all together in one environment. Okay. And not only that, um, we can run further commands or functions like this, listing all the um, all the uh, functions or, or all the uh, all the uh, um, I guess call them variables within R. Very cool. Um, so further down the line, running all these extra calls. Uh, obviously, this right here will display the value of my all um, and then we now have also uh, the results and we can transfer from R the environment back into results by doing this okay so now we can go in and capture or or, or uh, yeah basically um, get or retrieve the, the mean variable from within our, our uh, from within our, our environment from here um, and, and, and transfer it to our Java object called results and then pr and obviously print it out and that's what's happening here so let's run it uh, I thought this was really cool oh, wrong one there you go uh, and it's it's much cleaner, much smoother than MATLAB uh, using the Builder uh, JA toolbox. Uh, again, all this is open source, which means it's free. It costs you nothing. Um, the Builder JA toolbox, as well as uh, the Java, um, sorry, the MATLAB itself, you're, you're running in the thousands of dollars. But here you can do this all free. Obviously, R is free, Java is free. So this little bridge. Is all free. You have all the source code from the from the Google Code project um, here under our caller, um, and you can just boom. There you go. Retrieve your uh, code. So all in all, this is very powerful. Um, some of the more popular trading platforms uh, try to commercialize what I'm just showing you here. The the R bridge. Um, and uh, this is the workaround for it, for whatever Java platform you're going with. Obviously, I said I'm, I'm going to use the uh, uh, Google, sorry, the ja uh, Algo Trader. But for our caller, this is really powerful. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm convincing myself this is the right path to go with um, my goals, with what I'm trying to do. But hopefully, this will help you out. Uh, this this guy here. Um, name or maybe uh, where's the code just give me a second here this this authored I, I, I don't want to me Matt Hakan Satman <laughs> I do apologize if it's probably incorrectly uh, pronounced but uh, without him this wouldn't happen so uh, a huge shout out goes to him for doing this and pulling it off thank you very much and uh, yeah it's quite possible to do what I'm about to do. Have a good one.